welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here again with Steve Sanders and we're going to be talking about the fuel system that comes on your R2.8 crate engine. So to start off with, it is a high pressure common rail fuel system which means the rail, the lines and the injectors are under immense pressure and that pressurized fuel can be very dangerous so please do not open the system or modify it in any way for your safety and for the proper operation of the engine. So once we've kind of covered that, don't touch it, leave it alone, we're going to move over to our fuel filter. So the fuel filter comes with a couple different components. Uh, most important is, well not most important, but one of the more important things is this water and fuel separator. So the fuel filter will have the ability to tell you if it detects water in your fuel and you'll either have to drain that out or replace the filter. The way that works is through this water and fuel sensor at the bottom and you're going to connect that to your engine harness. That engine harness connection is located right here. You'll have to snip a couple zip ties to release that pigtail and that comes off right here. You'll plug that into the bottom of your fuel filter. Oop, there's a cap on it. Take that cap off first. <laughs> then you'll plug it into the bottom of your fuel filter. The other thing to note is this fuel filter is chassis mounted. So you're typically going to uh, mount it down on your frame rail or somewhere kind of away from the engine and you'll want to do that away from the hot side of the engine. So away from the turbo, away from the EGR cooler, away from the exhaust manifold. And this pigtail may not be long enough. In that case, we offer these Extension harnesses, you can buy them, um, they come in different lengths, or you can make your own, they're very common connectors. And so you'll want to connect that to your harness. And then you can mount your fuel filter wherever you'd like. All right, and so once you've found that place on your frame where you can uh, vertically mount this and have lots of clearance for your uh, primer and your lines, then it's time to make some lines. So when you're making fuel lines for a high pressure common rail fuel system or any fuel system, cleanliness is the most important thing. Uh, especially if you're talking about the lines between the filter and your high pressure common rail pump. If you don't uh, have that clean, there's nothing to catch it before it goes into that pump and it could really uh, wreak havoc on the pump or the injectors themselves. So watch out for that. One of the best ways to clean lines, especially if you're working with some rubber lines and you cut them, first blow the lines out with air. Uh, then using an electrical contact cleaner that leaves no residue, do not use brake cleaner. Uh, you can clean all those surfaces off and make sure then you cap them off, seal them, close the system, whatever you do before you start to work on other parts of the engine. You want to keep all that debris out. So on this pump, once you get your lines located, we have four quick disconnects included in our system um, for the fuel system part of this kit. Quick disconnect goes on here. You push it on until, oops, push it on until it snaps. There we go. So you've got that all located. You've got these nice little hose barbs uh, so you can run your supply lines to this. Uh, make sure you pay attention. This is a directional filter. Uh, once you've got all that good and ready, you have this handy primer you can unscrew, pump it until your system is primed, um, and then you're good to go. That'll really help with quick starting. On the engine side, once you get done with the filter, uh, you have two more quick disconnect fittings. This does have a uh, fuel line return back to the tank, and obviously it has a supply line. So we have two more quick disconnects for that. When you unpack your crate engine, there will be some fuel left in the fuel system from the testing at the plant. So be sure before you take those caps off that you get a nice lint-free rag uh, so you don't get any contaminants in there and you don't spill diesel fuel all over your nice pretty new crate engine. You have two quick disconnect tabs that are awkward to get to when you're on camera. So let that fuel spill out just a little bit here. Then you put your nice fitting in there until you hear it seat. You'll hear it snap. Those two white retainers pop back out. So this is your return line back to the tank. Uh, it's just quarter inch line, nothing sophisticated. Uh, and then your supply line here is a 5 16 line Make sure we catch any fuel that might be in there. And then quick disconnect on that. 5 16 hose barb here, so make sure you use clamps. And like I said before, uh, you want to cap this off. Don't leave any of these lines open. Don't do what I just did. Make sure that you have your hose ready uh, to close that system off. Um, 
one thing to note when you're modifying a fuel tank or buying a fuel cell for this, no lift pump is required for this engine. If you put one on it, you're probably gonna either flow too little or too much and you're gonna trigger a fault code. So don't do it. Uh, the high pressure pump on this has its own lift pump. Follow the installation diagram so you know where to place this relative to the height and distance from this pump to ensure that you don't get any vapor lock or air lock. Um, you do need to vent your fuel tank. So if you are doing a fuel cell, make sure it's vented. Uh, if you have a stock lift pump in your tank like a Jeep TJ would, uh, bypass it. You, you don't want to have that in the system at all. Make sure you clean out the whole system, especially yeah. the tank if you're reusing it. Um, you know, there's going to be some debris, there's going to be some gasoline residue in there. So make sure you thoroughly flush that out before you put your diesel fuel in and try to run your engine. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it for our uh, video on our fuel system. Definitely read through your installation guide, like Steve said. Um, there's a lot of diagrams in there about properly routing all of your lines, preventing vapor lock, and go to CumminsRepower.com for any information about your R2.8. See you next time, Cummins Repower Garage. Thank you.